Good morning, and in approximately 20 seconds, I can say good afternoon. It's just not quite noon, according to my clock here. Good afternoon. <laughs> this is uh, Cloud Chartist. Um, I am looking at some longer term Ichimoku charts. I'm looking at some monthly charts um, today in this webinar. And I hope to be able to um, provide some uh, helpful information about Ichimoku charting in general along the way uh, as a side effect of just looking at these charts. Um, so, uh, welcome to anybody that's here, um, and um, I will be happy to take requests um, for charts you want to look at, but I'm just going to go over the basic uh, indexes uh, on futures, and then uh, after I finish that, we can talk about other stuff like stocks and, and whatnot, or um, if I forget a futures contract. So starting off, we're looking at the ES on the, the monthly. This is back from 96 to current times. Um, this is the big picture. It's always um, fun to look at the big picture to get a reality check of where we're really at. Um, you see that um, we have a really strong uptrend currently. And... Uh, I'm going to get a little bit closer to this. Also, I just want to point out that we're looking at um, monthly candles here, so we're not looking at the new... Oh, I see. I have some drawings. Let me get rid of these drawings. Um, we're not looking at the current candle, uh, that this new candle that's open right now, because that's only for the beginning of September. We're looking at last month's um, candle, the big one. Although maybe we'll talk about the current candle, but in uh, analysis in general, or is in Ichimoku analysis, um, if you're looking at monthly time frame or any time frame charts, really you want to be looking at the closed candle. So oftentimes when I am uh, talking about uh, trade setups uh, intraday or whatever, if I'm looking at a 15-minute chart. I'm talking about um, a close, a candle close. So if I'm looking at a, a certain level being hit or held, I'm not talking about um, during the candle, the process of the candle. I'm talking about the closed candle. So um, let's get a little bit closer to this current situation. So. Last month's candle, the August candle, um, closed underneath the Tenkan Sen for the first time in quite a long time. Let's go back and see when that happened last. That was um, here um, in September of uh, 2012. So it's really been, we've been in this really strong uptrend on the monthly. We did violate the Tenkan Sen a, co a couple times. You know, we violated it uh, significantly in October of, of 20. I'm sorry, not 2012. This is 2011. We violated it significantly in 2011, and um, a couple more times at the. You know, oh, I remember that too, don't you? <laughs> that was, that was uh, the the Santa rally that never happened, um, and then finally did happen or something. Um, but otherwise, we've been in this really strong uptrend over the ten consent. In fact, if you have been long stocks, the S&P 500, uh, you wouldn't have really had a valid reason to get out of the stocks um, throughout this, this time period that we're showing here. Um, no, I'm not, you know, we're only looking at this current uptrend. So, but right now we have violated the Tenkan-sen and as a general rule in, in Ichimoku, um, a violation of the tank and send is, is uh, a warning signal to get out of your long trade or consider getting out of your long trade. So, 
We closed on the tank and seven, but we did put in a very big bottoming tail, almost possibly half the size of the whole entire candle. We also did come down and tag the Kijun Sen and found support just below it, so technically found support at the Kijun Sen. Um, overall, this chart in Ichimoku terms is still bullish, with uh, one exception in that it is currently trading under the Tenkan Sen. Um, but overall, it's bullish because in Ichimoku, anytime uh, price action is above the cloud, it's bullish. Anytime price action is below the cloud, it's bearish. You can see back in the, on the very side of this chart here, in 2010, price action was, was under the cloud and moved through the cloud at a cloud twist. Cloud twists um, are excellent places for price to move either through uh, to the upside or to the downside on Ichimoku clouds. That's why I always keep a close eye on, on cloud twists on any um, time frame. So, um, so what now for the ES? ES, uh, it's very important to get, if you want to be bullish for the ES, um, it's very important to get back over 1982.50 on the monthly time frame. Uh, either that or uh, it looks like sideways price action. If we lose the Kijun Sen at 1879.38, I would consider um, the situation to be perilous for bulls. Um, and I would consider uh, the uh, price action to be more neutral uh, sideways for the time being. Although technically neutral in Ichimoku terms is inside the cloud. So we're really quite far above the cloud. And if you look at the RSI that I have down here, I'll, I'll make that a little bit bigger. RSI is one of the only other indicators that I generally look at, and I, I, I wouldn't say I really um, trade off it per se, but it's uh, it's helpful to to see when we're overbought and oversold, especially on cer certain um, contracts or indexes or or products. Um, so you see that we've been overbought many times throughout this cycle from uh, the end of 2012, uh, and now we are. Uh, no longer overbought in this current situation since um, really, let's see, the beginning of the year. Uh, we haven't been overbought ever since. We've been uh, pretty much neutral in, in RSI terms. So I think that's, um, you know, the sentiment that we've had lately has been extremely bearish, but over the long time frame, I don't consider that to be bearish. Um, uh, I think it's it's good, it's healthy to uh, get out of this overbought scenario. So, um, so keep an eye on this current candle for these two levels, 1982.50 and 1979. And uh, sorry, 1879.38. Um, it would be, I think it would be really actually healthy to test the Kijun Sen once again and put in a bounce and uh, a monthly close over 18, uh, over 1982.50 would be very bullish. Okay, let's move on from the ES. Let's look at the TF, the Russell. And the Russell doesn't have... This is this is uh, an uh, an example of why I frequently use um, the continuous contract to analyze futures on longer term, longer time frame charts on um, Ichimoku because it, Ichimoku requires a certain amount of historical information in order to draw the cloud. So we don't have that much on the Russell at least not on um, on thinkorswim which is where I'm what I'm using right now but anyway let's lo zoom into where we do have some information so uh, last month's candle on the Russell we did lose the tank and send but we've been chopping around in uh, above and, and below the the tank and send on the Russell um, for a while um, for the last couple of years um, and we have consistently still 
remained above the Kijun Sen. We did come down and test the Kijun Sen. And we came in, uh, cur in the current month, we came down and tested the Kijun Sen and put a nice bounce in from that. So I consider that to be pretty healthy um, that we tested and bounced from the Kijun Sen once again. So on the monthly time frame, the two important levels that we're looking at are um, the Kijun Sen at 1149.30 and the Tenkan Sen at 1181.90. And if you want to just scribble down these numbers that I'm um, throwing out there for for fun, if you trade these indexes or if you're interested in longer term trades, um, it'll be you know fun to see how things turn out in the end. Um, especially if you trade, you know, if you're trading the Russell, if you're in a Russell index fund, or if you trade the Russell futures, you really want to know when we tag that. These are important levels on, um, on especially on monthly time frames. So in Ichimoku charting, the longer the time frame, the stronger the chart. So monthly charts um, in, in Ichimoku, the levels are really important. Um, we do have a nice rising cloud offering support to the Russell below. Uh, we can scroll over a, a little bit more. We have some more cloud, I believe, to show. So Ichimoku charts offer uh, the future, <laughs> which is one of the reasons that I love them and find them to be so helpful. Um, the cloud is calculated for 26 periods into the future. So this is 26 months into the future that we're looking at here. This is, um, we have an idea of what, what could happen, where support could be. Um, so super handy, especially on, you know, shorter time frames. You can tell where support and resistance are going to be um, coming up. You know, if you watch my videos recent, uh, uh, frequently, you know, you might have noticed, you might notice me talking about um, something that's going to happen. Like I'll say uh, CL has uh, a cloud twist in eight hours and this is what could happen there. Um, very uh, handy to be able to look at the Ichimoku indicators and know what potentially could happen in the future. And that is part of the reason why sometimes I am able to predict um, or why the, the, this technique is predictive. All right, that's about enough of TF, I think. Overall bullish um, needs to hold that Kijun Sen level very, on a closing basis. Let's look at the NASDAQ. Very strong uptrend for the NASDAQ. This is uh, 2007 top here. Um, you can see after we um, sold off uh, and really sold off in 2008, <coughs> excuse me, and then caught this beautiful bottom in the beginning of, sorry, <clears throat> Excuse me, that's terrible. I hate that. Um, in the beginning of 2009, we really had a fan, fan tabulous buying opportunity, um, and I scored some bargains there myself. That was really the my first year of full time um, day trading, and um, I was trading stocks and options primarily. Uh, um, I think I just started trading futures at the, well, actually I started trading futures in the beginning of 2009 and I started by um, paper trading. Um, and so I bought some ES in the beginning of 2009. I really didn't know what I was doing with, with futures at that point, but I made like a hundred thousand dollars on just staying long ES through, you know, fake hundred thousand dollars in my paper trade account. <laughs> those were, um, those were fun times and just by staying long ES the whole year. Um, 
and you know I should have stayed long ES the whole uh, you know seven years <laughs> but you know hindsight is is 2020 so um, but unfortunately uh, for you know things were not as uh, clear in in 2010 so I actually got out of a lot of my uh, bargain buys that I got took in 2009 and in 2010, in 2010, it was real volatile um, and sideways market, kind of like we have going on right now. Although I'm not making any comparisons because I'm not like that. <laughs> I don't like to make those kind of comparisons. I mean, 2011 was like that too. You know, um, 2012 was like that too. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, I, I don't know what kind of point I'm trying to make. We got over the cloud here in um, 2010. Let's, so let's zoom zoom in to the moment that we got over the cloud. It's nice to see I have a few people listening. Thanks for joining me. Um, so we got over the cloud in, in, um, in 2010, and we've been bullish ever since in Ichimoku terms on the NASDAQ. Um, we've stayed... We lost the Tenkan Sen here in um, 2012 and lost it for a moment here in 2013. But overall, we've been above the, the Tenkan Sen ever since then until now. Um, last month, we put in a close under the Tenkan Sen. But as you notice, let me zoom in a little bit, bit more. We're currently trading back over the Tenkan Sen on the NASDAQ. So the current candle obviously is not closed yet, and we're only 12 days into the month, but um, it's significant that we are trading back over the, the Tenkan Sen and that um, it did not reject price. So if we can put in a closing, uh, if we can close the month over uh, the 4.29713 uh, level where the Tenkan Sen is at right now, that would be extremely... Uh, bullish, it would put us back in full bull um, in Ichimoku terms. And by full bull, I mean over everything without any um, resistance. You see the RSI down here on the NASDAQ is not a, a overbought either. It's been overbought for the last few years and, and currently is not overbought. So that is healthy in my opinion. Um, and we do have rising cloud support underneath here. That's uh, about what I have to say for the NASDAQ. Let's go move on to the Dow. The Dow, we see um, that we are indeed finding resistance at the Kijun Sen here. And I think, let's see, we put in... Um, Let's see, the close was 16479, and the Kijun Sen was 16491. So we did put in a close just slightly under the Kijun Sen um, in August, and so we're still under the Kijun Sen. So if you want to get bullish the Dow, I think we really need to get back over the 16491 uh, Kijun Sen. And then we will have the uh, ten consent to deal with above at one six eight ten. Both the ten consent and the Kijun Sen are flat here, and there's uh, the ten consent and the Kijun Sen are both quite close together. Uh, that indicates a tightening range, um, especially if price gets back into the area between the Kijun Sen and the ten consent. Um, then we have a very small range to work with on the Dow. Um, Dow, a lot of underlying stocks on the Dow, at least ones that I watch like uh, IBM and uh, Transports, etc., have been really solidly beaten down. Um, and so despite the, you know, uh, indexes being... Uh, 
rather resilient. Um, a lot of these, you know, blue chip stocks are, are um, have been, you know, quite eroded by this <laughs> price action. Um, so, but overall on Ichimoku terms, we're still bullish and still above the cloud, and we have nice rising cloud support here, just like in the other indexes. A friend of mine sent me an article from, um, I'm going to look at gold next. A friend of mine sent me an article from Zero Hedge yesterday, and it it had a, a, a tombra, shall we say, or had, had, a, had a, 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 the person writing the article was putting forth an opinion about whether the markets were bullish or bearish or not, and I... I personally, well, I'm not, I don't have a huge fundamental interest, like the fundamentals of the market at this point in time don't seem to mean very much as far as price action goes, um, especially the stock market or um, et cetera. So um, I, I find that I just don't, I try to avoid listening to other people's opinions um, because they really just cloud um, my analysis. Uh, I mean, I have this, I have a really solid trading methodology using these Ichimoku charts. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't really want to know if the CNBC guy or the, you know, uh, hedge fund guy is bullish or bearish because when it comes down to it, everyone can be wrong. You know, everyone has been wrong. And someone will be right. You know, there'll be, like, some person, you know, uh, that will be right. And after they've been determined to be right, they'll they'll pat themselves on the back significantly and they'll start a newsletter and or <laughs> they'll make a billion dollars and they'll run for president or something. I don't know. It's all of this stuff is irrelevant to me. Anyway, let's go back to the charts. So, looking at gold. Wow, this is interesting. So, I haven't actually been looking at monthly charts. So, um, partly I just wanted to do this by myself. So, I thought I would just share with you, and hopefully, you'll get something out of it too, because we have this fantastic technology um, of Ticker TV, where these guys are providing. They're letting me do this. This. Uh, Webinar for you guys, free of charge, free of uh, cumbersome uh, usernames and passwords. Unless you know, I would suggest if you're interested in my work, however, that you do sign up. You just need to give them your email address, and they will just let you know um, when I broadcast. Uh, it's really simple. They don't send you any spam, um, and that also gives you the ability to come in the chat room and ask me questions, um, etc. So it's basically like a subscription service for free. I've been giving away a lot of uh, of time and analysis free of charge to my ticker TV people, and I'm happy to do it. And I'm hope I hope it's helpful. So looking at gold, we see this. This is the interesting part of gold that I'm looking at right now. And I apologize. Uh, one of the drawbacks of this current broadcasting software is I don't have a cursor, so it's a little bit hard for me to highlight certain areas. So right now I have my crosshairs, which are kind of faint. Maybe I should try to thicken my crosshairs somehow. Um, but I'm pointing at this red line, which is currently uh, about um, two-thirds, a little more than two-thirds of the, w of the way from the left-hand side of the screen, and it's currently at the bottom of the cloud here. That is the Chikao span. The Chikao span represents price action time shifted 26 periods into the past. Um, the Chikao is currently uh, finding support at the bottom of the cloud. And that's really interesting because uh, that could, could save the day for, for if you're bullish on gold. Um, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Because, well, before I zoom in, looking at the big picture, this is from the highs back in um, uh, 2011. You see that gold put in this crazy tweezer tops here. Um, 
nine, I can't, it's like hard to even fathom that gold was valued so high at 1923.70. Putting these awesome tweezer tops here and um, chopped around sideways um, and then basically sold off for the, since then. Um, so anyway, let me zoom in. So the Chico finding support at the bottom of the cloud is significant. The cloud support lasts in, uh, for another month or so. Um, once we get to the end of the month, uh, um, of the next month, um, so the end of October, um, the Chico is going to run out of room at this level, at the uh, like 11, basically 1100, 1104, 1105, something like that. Chico is going to run out of room. So it, the Chico is going to need to decide whether it stays in the cloud, and if so, it has to go higher because the cloud goes higher. So it has to, in order to stay in the cloud, it has to go back up to like 1140 area in order to stay in the cloud, or it comes out of the cloud. And uh, if the cheek out comes out of the cloud, it's no longer has support. And basically whatever the cheek out does, current price action does. Very handy. Sometimes I've seen people eliminating the cheek out uh, from their Ichimoku charts, which I think is absolutely insane because it's one of the most handy things that there is. Um, so looking at the current price action, it's we see that we're... Uh, bearish in all ways. Um, we're uh, under the uh, Tenkan-sen. We ha have been under the cloud for some time. We tried to push back into the cloud um, a couple times last year and uh, failed. And basically, the cloud has been acting as resistance for quite a long time at around 1300. My cursor just locked up. I hope that undoes itself. <laughs> we'll be looking at at gold for a while. Um, and uh, so the tank and has been offering act, acting as resistance since um, for most of the time. We did make this um, um, bullish foray. Uh, that's interesting. We did make this bullish. Now everything's working again. That's great. For a to the top of the cloud here at, at um, with a with a high of thirteen oh seven eighty. Um, uh, in the beginning of the year, hold on. Let me uh, OC. Then the top of the Kumo will be resistance for. Yes, indeed. Um, the top of the Kumo will be resistance for the Chikao around 1300. Let's see, 1300. I'm sorry, in case you're watching the archive of this, I'm taking a, a question from the uh, uh, live viewer here, the mysterious OC. Um, yes, indeed. If the Chico does break out of the cloud and moving through time, um, like into the end of the year, um, the Chico has resistance up here starting at around 1280 and then to about 1300 for uh, quite a while, for the next um, year or so. Um, but currently, um, the bottom, not the top. Well, yes, <laughs> the, 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 uh, I get what you're talking about, um, the bottom of the cloud. Um, so anyway, so we're, we're basically, essentially, we're bear flagging underneath the tank and sand. Um, and after this uh, sort of breakdown from, from this consolidation period that we've been in. Uh, so we, we made this bullish candle, we came up, tagged the cloud, got rejected, closed underneath the tank and send um, back in February, and continued selling, putting in a bottom, put some sideways action in, and then um, got 
rejected with this bearish candle in, in July. Um, then after that happened, the Tenkan Sen and the Kijin Sen both went flat, suggesting a mean reversion back towards the flat uh, Tenkan Sen and Kijin Sen above. We also noticed that we have a rising cloud with a rising flat area in the cloud above this um, over, the last, over the summer months. And we also have a cloud twist coming up in the future. So I can't, um, I can't predict what, what gold is going to do here. I mean, um, gold could get a bid. And if it does, it could break through the cloud to the upside here. That is definitely a potential scenario that could happen. Um, so I thought I, it would be uh, prudent to, to point that out. Um, because of, because that's, uh, as I said earlier, you know, cloud twists are, are, are important to keep an eye on. But in order for that to happen, we're going to get a lot of advanced warning because we're going to get price moving over the tank and sand, over the flat tank and sand here. That will be our first uh, warning signal, a, a uh, candle close above the flat tank and sand, which is currently at 11.90.10. Then we're going to see whether or not price action can get over 12.53, the flat um, Kijun Sen here also. If those two things happen, then we could potentially be looking at a breakout over, above, back above the cloud. But so far, there's nothing to predict that. Um, and we're just bare flagging underneath the, the um, tank and Sen. We could be attracted back towards it, um, or we could break down lower. Um, Currently, the current, uh, the last candle was an inside candle, uh, so August candle closed inside um, July's candle, and so thus we're in a downtrend. Downtrend, and the current candle right now is inside last month candle also. So we're um, in a tightening range, uh, in downtrend intact, and everything bullish Ichimoku except for this one aspect of the Ichikao having support in the cloud. Let's look at silver. Wow. <laughs> when you look at, you know, when you look at this silver chart, that uh, like I I hope that I don't have any um uh, silver bowls in my room here. I uh I am not a silver bull. If you if you've been following me for very long, you know that I'm pretty much a silver bear, um, and I usually trade silver to the downside. Um, although sometimes I'll trade it, you know, to the upside in shorter time frames. But we chugged along from for a long time in a very tight range. Um, and then you know started seeing some some interest in silver after the 2008 crash um, people started buying silver and it got let, let's zoom in to make this bigger after the 2008 crash start, people started building buying sil silver and it put in this really nice reversal at when it found cloud support I wasn't trading silver back then but that is just that's a really really classic Ichimoku reversal when we saw uh, price coming down um, after it lost the Tenkan Sen here. I hope you can see what I'm referring to. Let me make this part bigger so you can see better. Because I think it's really fascinating. Um, so we lost the Tenkan Sen here in this bearish candle in August of, of uh, 2008 and then continue selling and then we put in uh, a close right at the bottom of the Kumo here in, in October of 2008 then the, the next candle open up the November candle open up inside the cloud this is just a, this is a classic support held um, reversal for silver and if you had bought silver there you were real happy <laughs> uh, you're still happy really if it's under your bed, um, you're still happy, but maybe nervous and maybe feeling like you're not as rich as you used to be. But so silver then proceeded to to close inside the cloud the next month, and then in 2009 broke over the cloud and has been uh, over the cloud. 
since. So traded all the way up to uh, 49.82. That's when people started getting really nutty about silver. Um, this is in 2011. Um, I don't know if you. I don't. I don't have a TV, and I haven't watched TV um, since far prior to this. Um, I stopped watching TV in the in the 90s. <laughs> um, but I've been taking care of my mom um, for a while, and she has the TV on frequently. And I've noticed a lot of these silver infomercials. Um, and, and when I, when this silver craze was going on, I didn't really understand why everybody was getting so crazy about silver, you know, cause at the same time, um, I, I have a, I have an art degree. I went to the Rhode Island School of Design, um, and I, my major was in printmaking. So I used a lot of photographic techniques. And, um, when I was in school, we didn't really have digital photography yet. We still had traditional photography, and there's a ton of silver used in the photography industry. So it was interesting that uh, you know we at this point we were you know after 2000 we started moving more towards towards digital photography and and out of uh, traditional photography. And yet, the price of silver was going up, even though it's you know not used as much industrially in that um, in that context. Um, so, I noticed you know a lot of the, there's a lot of pumping of silver. You know, a lot of um, uh, sales. <laughs> silver was being sold to people. The idea of silver being sold to people that it was more valuable than gold and uh, more rare than gold, and I, I read an uh, immense amount of um, propaganda, perhaps you might think facts on on silver, um, you know, over these years, and uh, I was like, what? <laughs> like, didn't make any sense to me, but, um, so I feel really bad for people that that decided to that they didn't trust the traditional investing system after the crash in 2008 and took what was left of their IRA and put it into silver buying silver at inflated prices from internet shysters and thinking that they were gonna retire on silver and now we see what's happened um, so anyway enough of my babbling let's get back to the charts so currently silver has been in a in a bearish a downtrend um, basically you know ever since it put in these highs it's been a bit choppy in this in this area uh, from the highs after after we sold off down to 26 in um, 2011 we were in a ch choppy range until 2014 when we sold and we broke under the cloud um, I was I was actually trading it here, um, and I noticed that we held the cloud here, and I wasn't really sure what was going to happen. I sort of slammed on the brakes as far as being bearish because the the fact that we held this cloud here. Then the next month, when we put in the cloud, uh, the close under the cloud, it was pretty obvious that the silver was going to stay stay bearish, and um, indeed it did 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 put in a, a hearty bounce but didn't make it back over the tank and send and it's been under the tank and send pretty much ever since except that for this area here um, last year we made it over the tank and send for a little bit a couple of months well technically one like yeah like two months we made it over the tank and send and then we've been underneath ever since um, and let me zoom into more modern time uh, so we're bear flying underneath the tank and sem, um, putting in, but we are putting in uh, dojis here. Last month was a long-legged doji. We currently have a, sh a small doji um, building at the moment. But so there's a lot of indecision here about silver currently, um, as you can tell by the, t the candlesticks, and we have pretty long uh, tails on either side of the candlesticks. The nature of the candlesticks here on the monthly, um, we did. E we did put in, you know, this was a very bearish time for uh, silver f last year. Um, some, if you got short around um, 
If you got short around 20 or 19, we you had some caught some really nice moves down to uh, 17 in this one month of September last year, and then we continued lower, put in this really long-legged doji, and I remember trading that was a little bit nutty. Um, put in a hearty bounce, but didn't close over the tank and sen at the beginning of the year, and then just sideways choppy action, um, but still staying below the tank and sen. So. We note that um, currently the Tenkin Sen and the Kijin Sen are both flat above. Um, so we could have price action attracted towards the 1620 level again. Um, we see we're kind of putting in uh, a support level here um, around 1450. Um, Bear with me, my cow is just having a sneezing attack, so I was a little bit concerned about that, but I think she's she's cool. <laughs> um, they're going, uh, cats are going a bit nuts at the moment. So the parameters for silver at the moment are, is if you're bearish, you want to be aware of that 1620 level. Uh, that would be a decisive uh, level. If we got back over that, then you can be stop being bearish start being um, a little bit caution of your bearish stance, but overall in Ichimoku terms, silver is still totally bearish. Under the cloud, under the under the Kijin Sen, under the ta Tenkin Sen, the, the Kijin Sen is bear crossed. If the pink line, the Kijin Sen, is over the Tenkin Sen, that it means it's bear crossed. And the Chikao has no support down here. I'm just going to expand this for a second. We can look at the RSI. Uh, the RSI is is on the uh, on the uh, sort of on the low end of the scale, but could go a lot further to, before becoming oversold. All right, let's look at um, gold, silver. Let's look at some. Let's look at some treasuries. On uh, this is ZB, the uh, thirty-year U.S. Treasury bond futures. ZB is something. ZB and ZN are something I've been trading a lot recently. You see that last month um, ZB put in a close right at the tank and send. Um, this is uh, a potential uh, pullback to breakout pattern, but it's not. It's not really like. It's not really what I like to see because these two candles violated the tank and send and came down to the Kijin Sen. So that's pretty sloppy. If you tried to buy this pullback to the tank and send here. In, in treasury bonds, you um, you might have been okay for a while, but then once the tank and send got violated again in, in June, um, you would have had to get out, and obviously a lot of people did get out. But it did find support here at the Kijin Sen at 147, so um, that would have been a nice buy, buy point, and you wouldn't have been stopped out if you bought down at the Kijin Sen and put your stop below it. You wouldn't have been stopped out. You'd still be in the trade. You'd still be long. 30-year treasury bonds. Um, so despite holding the Tenkin Sen on closing basis last month, the new current candle opened up underneath the Tenkin Sen and is going to be finding resistance at the Tenkin Sen at 155.07. Um, Overall, this chart is still bullish, but you notice that unlike the, a lot of the in stock indexes that we were looking at earlier, we don't have a rising cloud below. Um, we have a flat cloud and a flat cloud that is um, becoming quite thin into um, next year, into the middle of next year. We have a very thin uh, cloud, and so despite this pretty bullish uptrend that we have here, um, 
it's a little precarious. It looks like we could move sideways, um, to potentially to low to lower. Um, but overall, still bullish in Ichimoku terms, except for just the fact that we're under the Tengen Sen at the moment. Let's look at the tenure. The ten year is actually different from the uh, from the thirty year. You notice the ten year is inside the cloud. So the, the ten year is, and that's the first one that we've had in the futures that we've looked at so far. The ten year is is neutral as it's inside the the Kumo, um, and it's even ultra neutral as it's between the Tenkan Sen and the Kijin Sen. So very tight price action for the ten year. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, last month we saw that the price action come up and break over the cloud temporarily in the 129 area and then come back down and uh, close inside. In fact, the whole candle body um, last month of the 10-year ZN was inside between the Tenkan Sen and the Kijin Sen and currently is still doing so. Broke over the Tenkan Sen temporarily but it's still inside. So really, uh, as I've been saying for for the ZN for a while. Until we get a close above the Tenkan Sen at 127 260 or below the Kijin Sen, which is currently trading at or which is currently existing at like 126 220. Um, we're in a tight range, you know. So we'll see what happens. And uh, even if we do move above or below the Tenkan Sen and the Kijin Sen here, we're still in the range of the cloud, so between 128.28 and 124.065 or 05, 124.04, let's call it 124.04 is the bottom of this range of the cloud. So neutral price action for the 10-year. Um, let's look at some grains. This is uh, corn. Wow, that is crazy. Just uh, taking in the historical uh, information. I used to trade corn quite quite a lot, and uh, I haven't been trading it lately. But these were just some crazy. Fantastic moves, like look at that move, that was just nuts. I did trade that this summer of uh, 2012, I was trading this uptrend on corn. It was really fun. <laughs> I didn't get short, but it would have been. Like this was a, just a beautiful short for, for corn. Um, in let's see June of of 2013 when we lost the cloud on this candle that was a really nice place to get short and basically if you had shorted corn with your stop at the cloud at around um, 550 you wouldn't have gotten stopped out yet not that anyone's going to be trading corn on such a long term time frame but Maybe. Um, so currently what is going on, we had this big rip in June um, on USDA reports. That's when weather was not so good and um, people were thinking that the crops were going to be s seriously affected by the weather and the USDA was saying s the same and a lot of farmers I know got real excited about the bottom being in potentially in, in grain prices, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Um, and I do say unfortunately because I think that it would be good for um, 
commodity grain prices to, to put in a bottom. Um, I think it would be healthy for the the grain economy. But um, so currently we we see last month's candle. Um, so after that, you know, after the USDA report, we um, we put in a top around um, 431. Tried to go a little bit higher in July and got rejected at the same level, and then put in a close under the tank and sent. Then we put in last month's candle is uh, potentially a reversal type doji. Um, it's still in downtrend from the last candle as it has a higher, uh, sorry, a lower high and a lower low. But we did see some buyers coming in. And that, this is the type of candle that you, after a downtrend you could expect the potential for a, a change of trend to the upside. And so far that looks like what we have going on here um, with a higher low so far and a higher high so far. So I would not be surprised to see corn trade higher towards 400.50 um, traded. In fact, most of this candle is made up of because of yesterday's strong move after the um, USDA report. Um, um, so watch for 400. 50 um, if you're bullish on corn for a potential resistance area and if we do move above that 420.50 is the key gen sign above we're still very bearish in Ichimoku terms we're very far below the cloud but if we do get over 420.50 we do have a chance of moving higher towards the flat cloud above and we do also have a cloud twist coming up in the, in the spring of next year uh, where if we did get some real serious bullish momentum going for the grains for corn in particular, we could break through right at this in this area, in the March-April area. Let's look at soybeans. Soybeans uh, also bearish in Ichimoku terms, um, downtrend, putting in some bottoming tails here. Um, current candle uh, is, uh, did put in a lower high, um, I mean sorry, a lower low, and uh, I don't know, not looking too bullish at the moment. If soybeans do try to put in a bottom here, I would say that you could uh, consider that to be the potential if we got back over 885 that would look like potential for tweezer bottoms and that we could possibly come up and test the 957.63 level on, on uh, soybeans and that would be potential short if you want to remain bearish as the overall chart is bearish um, and then if we do trade over the 957.63 tank and send then um, it, especially if we put in a close, that could be uh, the start of a, a trend up back towards the uh, cloud above, Kijin set in the cloud above. Um, let's look at wheat. So I'm sort of like, uh, once I get the um, main these three grain, grain charts that I always do out of the way. If anybody has any requests, um, please let me know. So looking at wheat on the monthly, <clears throat> you see that we had a very bearish candle in July for wheat after we um, put in that big, uh, very bullish candle, very bearish re, uh, react, uh, re, re, uh, reversal. And then August we put in uh, kind of tricky candle for wheat because we traded up back up to this this uh, obviously important 530 level for wheat you see that 530 was uh, prior support here and then resistance and support and then resistance for these all of these topping tails so that 530 level is key and uh, the tank and sand is actually right around that level at currently at 539.13 so if we do f for some reason get a reversal higher for wheat We'll be looking at that 539.13 level to offer resistance on the tank it's down here. Uh, 
a look at coffee. Not enough data for a good Ichimoku charts. Well, anyway, before I zoom in, you can see that um, coffee is real bearish at the moment. It's getting pretty close to uh, historical lows, at least recent history. Um, and Starbucks should be really happy. <laughs> um, although, honestly, I don't know how much of their coffee trading, oops, pardon me, is on this market. I know that the, that um, these are the type of beans that they use, but they might, you know, I don't know how much they contract privately outside the market. Be interesting to know more about that. Um, so coffee's in a downtrend. Now I will zoom in, actually. A very, it looked like we might be possibly putting in a bottom here. Uh, this, uh, like 127, seemed to be offering us, us some support. This prior resistance turned support level here, 120, uh, oh, sorry, around 126, I should say. And, uh, but then we lost that area on this new candle, and we've been trading down, and we're, we're currently near the lows of this candle. So uh, I think we could go lower. Uh, perhaps to the 111.50, 1, 110 area, and then potentially find support at this prior support level. Um, so we'll see what happens. Keep an eye on the 110 level if you want to be a buyer for coffee. Otherwise, it looks quite bearish. Under the cloud, bear cross, Kijin Sen over Tengen Sen. I don't have a Chico, Chico on this. this. Alright, so... Um, that's about all I'm really interested in looking at for futures at the moment. I'm going to quickly look at some stock charts. Let's look at Apple. And um, bear with me. I'm going to get rid of some stuff on here that we don't need for stock charts. Don't really care about the volume at the moment. I don't really care about corporate actions. Boom. All right. So Apple currently put in the highs up here around 130 and it's been selling. Put in last month close underneath the tank and cents after coming down and testing the key and send pretty much like the S&P 500. Kind of is the S&P 500. Um, and then we, um, in this current month, we sold down and uh, during that crashy time, put in a very nice buy opportunity, in my opinion, to get long Apple for the long haul at around 108. Um, and uh, if you bought the dip there on Apple, you're still a pretty happy camper as Apple has moved back over the 10 consent here. So if Apple is able to stay, uh, put in a monthly close above the tank and send, currently at 113.27. Um, that would be back in full bull mode for Apple and perhaps the, the U.S. markets in general. We do have the Kijin Sen coming up here. For When the Kijin Sen does this, it, there is a potential for a bear cross. This is a bear cross over here. That happened in 2013. Um, we do have uh, a cloud taking a bit of a dip here um, for until um, May of next year when the cloud starts moving higher. And, um, and when it does start moving higher, you know, it offers rising cloud support, so that's nice, but it's um, important to recognize that there is a bit of a dip ahead. Um, so it's real important if you want to be bullish for Apple and the st U.S. stock market in general that it holds the 10 consent at 113.27. Let's look at... I'm going to just put up some big tech giants I haven't looked at in a long time. I used to trade um, equity options. Primarily before I started trading futures. And then... With the inter introduction of weekly options, I just found that equity options became very difficult 
and over the last couple of years a lot of the price action has been happening overnight in the overnight section in the equities market or um, basically you know we get these huge gap ups or gap downs and uh, then chop around intraday thus um, premium sellers have been really the ones making money um, but then with the crazy moves in the VIX lately premium sellers their their game is sort of uh, up their gig is up <laughs> too so I've been kind of staying away from the options market except for here and there seeing a, a, a good opportunity but so Netflix put in this crazy long-legged doji type candle here with a new high of 129.29 came down tested the tank and send so Netflix, Netflix is still in full bull mode here um, we see that the current candle is uh, could potentially come down and test the 87.28 tank it's on here, in which case it would be a good buy opportunity, I think, for Netflix, um, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't really understand why Netflix is so bullish. I mean, it had a split, which is why it's trading at this, this price level, but um, I just don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it, but um, there is a potential here. You see that the Kijin Sen could come up and and make a bear cross, so it's real important. This 8728 level is real important for Netflix. If we go below that, then we could um, get a bear cross and continue much lower. Um, let's look at Baidu. Part of my demanding kitty in the background. Um, Baidu put in a uh, wow, fantastic bounce off the off the cloud last month when I wasn't even paying attention. I haven't really been looking at Baidu. That was obviously during the because of the China uh, market crash. We should take a look at China actually. I'll look at that after I do this. Um, and currently Baidu's like floating in the air here between the tank sand and the cloud. So there's a lot of room between the tank and sand at 167.33 and the cloud down here at 115. I would not be interested in trying to guess where this thing is going on this time frame whatsoever. <laughs> no thank you. Since we're here, let's look at FXI. This is the China ETF, easiest way to track China in general and, and think or swim at the moment um, that I know of. So China uh, put in a top in April and has been selling off ever since. Last month tried to hold the cloud um, and, and I mean succeeded in holding the cloud and then the current current candle is that we're right up against the cloud again. So that's real interesting for China. It would be interesting to see how this candle closes. If it can get back into the cloud, um, that would be neutral for China and perhaps the world markets in general. If it can get back over 38 um, on a monthly close, that would be very bullish, I think, for, for China and for everyone. And even though it wouldn't be like very bullish in Ichimoku terms. You see that the Chikao has uh, some stuff to deal with right at the moment. The Chikao is above the candles currently, but is underneath the Tenkan Sen and the Kijin Sen, so it has to get through those. But once the Chikao gets through the Tenkan Sen and Kijin Sen, like basically where the current candle topped is where the Chikao could not get above the, the Kijin Sen. If it does get above there, then it has plenty of room to move to the upside. Um, currently, the, on the current month, it can go all the way to 41 area. Uh, yeah, about 41 without interfering with the cloud. And then next month, it can go even higher um, to 41.80 area. And then... Um, so let's see, 
this is uh, September, October, November. Yeah, so in November, the Chinese market, the Chikao can go all the way to about 42.75 uh, on the FXI, which happens to coincide with the Kijin Sen and the Tenkin Sen resistance here. Um, so that could be a significant move to the upside for the China market. But first, we need to get into the cloud. Um, so around 37, and then we need to get over the cloud, 38.26, in order for that to happen in China. All right, let's look at some other stocks. Let's look at CMG. Whoa. That is just crazy. I mean... Wow. I back when my I was trading options, I was trading in the three hundred zone and that thing could really move, but the options are extremely illiquid, but I would never I did not expect it to go up to seven thirty, seven fifty. That's just crazy. Um so fully bullish for CMG. Um if we do get some selling, we come down and test the 677, 678 area. Um, that would look like to be a pretty good buy. Um, we were overbought on RSI for quite a while. Um, we got relieved of that on these on this red candle, and we got relieved of that from on this downtrend after um, we put in a uh, tweezer tops here in. January and February of the beginning of the year, but then we put in this huge candle um, in July. That is just a huge move. Actually, I remember that now happening. That was just crazy. Um, back over the tank and sen. So once we moved back over the tank and sen, it was an obvious buy setup. Um, you know, once it got back over 671, put in you know about 80 points from there. But that happened on an earnings move, I believe, so it wouldn't be so like obvious that you could have could have bought it because I think it did that all in one move. Can't remember quite. Um, so the we also have a rising cloud, um, but we do have the cloud sort of flattening up at the end of next year. That's all we can see so, so far of it. So um, we could get an up move and then more flagging. So we'll see what happens with CMG. Let's look at IBM. Heading out of the NASDAQ, Momo stocks into the blue chip realm. You see that IBM um, last month lost the cloud finally. I had been long IBM myself and um, finally got out of my all of my IBM when it lost the cloud here in the monthly time frame and not not looking very good for IBM um, at the moment but it's, there's a possibility that we see the Chico over here could could um, and probably will uh, find support of the cloud and that we could get a move up back up for IBM towards the flat tank and above and the cloud at 158.46 it would be if you want to be bullish again about um, about IBM and the Dow in general then if IBM can make it back over that 158.46 level then and get back into the cloud then we can talk about making new highs um, or at least uh, maintaining equilibrium uh, we do have a pretty thick cloud uh, it would be real I mean technically it would be real neutral but technically it would be it would be pretty bullish if we got back into the cloud and then back over the Sen at one, 170 so I'd really be looking at, at at that area, at the 170 area for for getting back long IBM for the long haul. Let's see, let's look at tra transports. 
look at NSC for fun. Transports have been pretty interesting. Um, they were really bullish for a while um, at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. And then once they started, once they lost the, so they lost the 10 consent here and then put in this like last ditch attempt trying to get back over the 10 consent and then lost it here. And then they've maintained below the 10 consent, uh, finally losing the key consent here and, uh, and coming down. But last month we had a pretty significant bottoming tail on NSC. And in case you don't know, NSC is Norfolk Southern Railroad. It's a pretty good indicator for the, the transports, I think. Um, pretty important blue chip stock that's been around forever. We see that the Chico, let me zoom in to make this a little clearer. The Chico um, came down and tested the top of this candle and is um, moving higher. So uh, potential for the uh, for this to be a bottoming candle for uh, NSC is pretty good, I would say. We do have a really nice rising cloud to support, and we have a ten cent going flat here on the monthly time frame. So we could be drawn back towards that. That's interesting. Keep that in mind if you're looking for a, a blue chip transport stock to get into on the long haul. Could be a good buy for NSC. Let's look at XOM for fun. So obviously XOM is killed because of the oil situation. I didn't even look at. Did I look at? I don't even. Did I? I didn't look at crude on my <laughs> futures. That is hilarious. <laughs> All of the people that that are watching this webinar that gave up on me for not doing crude like a while ago. And I realize I'm getting, geez, I've been doing this. I've been talking for like an hour. That's impressive. Nobody is going to get this far into my webinar in real life because no one's attention span is that long, I don't think. My real, my attention span isn't even that long. I've <laughs> so I should wrap this up. But all right, looking at ExxonMobil, Exxon we're right at the edge here. We're, we're um, testing the bottom of the cloud. This is really fascinating monthly chart. Um, if oil gets a bid here, we should hold this monthly chart. So this could be a really nice buy setup for Exxon. Down in the 72, 69. I used to be long Exxon myself and uh, got out in the 90s. Um, a few, couple of years ago, three years ago, or something like that. Um, so I actually missed this run up here, but pretty happy to be out still, but could be a buy sub for, for Exxon. Um, keep an eye on whether or not it can hold this uh, 73 level on a closing basis if you want to get long Exxon. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up uh, here uh, because uh, this video is really long and I don't think anybody's able to continue watching. It's like that, you know, like uh, the class where the bell never rings. So thanks for joining me um, and watching this stuff with me. And um, if you're interested in Ichimoku's, learning more about Ichimoku's, um, uh, I do have a uh, chat room where I hang out during the day and, and teach people this stuff and go over these kind of charts on a shorter time frames and, and trade with Ichimoku's trade um, futures primarily in the room. Um, and have a lot of experienced traders in there. I have several um, guys who used to trade on the in the pits um, who are, have converted to using you know trading from home with with screens there and there, um, sharing their wealth of of knowledge over with um, many of them. Uh, all of them have been trading for a lot longer than I have. I've only been trading full time since two thousand and nine. Although I have been dabbling in markets since the dot-com era, I used to trade uh, on fundamentals and and uh, and Momo really, um, and I was a bit of a trend spotter, I guess, back in the old days because I used to be an Apple consultant. Um, so I was buying stuff like Palm and AOL and <laughs> that kind of stuff back in the day. Anyway, um, so enjoy the rest of your day. 
And I hope that you found something in here interesting, and I'll let you go. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you're interested in, in getting more Cloud Chartist stuff, check out my website at cloudchartist.com, or feel free to uh, hit me up on Twitter at cloudchartist, or send me an email, cloudchartist at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.